we'll see it uh, the money go out of the checking account and then the question is how are, how are we going to record basically the money going out of the checking account if we were doing a full service tracking inventory system within QuickBooks we we would need to be uh, tying it out to the items so we can run inventory reports if we're not doing a full service system within quickbooks which is typically the case when you're using a shopify store we're going to have to track inventory someplace else partially in the third party platform because we'll have the units of inventory that we can uh, try to make sure to populate here but we're usually going to need something else like a spreadsheet or possibly a third party app depending on how complex you want to get all right then when we sell the inventory if it was an on-ground store and we're using a perpetual inventory system, we would use an invoice and uh, or a sales receipt. So if it's actually in a store and someone bought it in the store, we would use a sales receipt so we don't have to track the accounts receivable and the invoice is used when we're gonna have to deal with accounts receivable to track them to pay us later. So let's just think about a sales receipt situation because that's similar to an e-commerce situation because when someone buys something on a website they're typically going to pay for it at that point in time which is similar to someone purchasing something like in a store and bringing whatever they're purchasing up to basically the cash register now when you think about a sales receipt the transaction that happens in a sales receipt is quite complex actually even though if it's set up properly it's easy to facilitate you might have gone to a grocery store that has a self checkout you can do it yourself you just scan the thing but the actual transaction that's happening is it's recording an increase in uh whatever you're paying them in cash uh that's going up possibly into some uh, uh holding account so they can group the payments and then put it into the bank account the other side is going to revenue or sales and then you also have to deal with the decrease of inventory at that point in time and you have to deal with the related cost of goods sold and possibly with sales tax all happens at this point if you're using a perpetual inventory system so so that means that if i was in quickbooks in order to do that i would have to have my items to be set up properly and then and then when i and then when i make a sale I would use either an invoice or a sales receipt and the items as I enter the items into the system and we'll show a demonstration of this in future presentations it would properly uh, do everything we just said it would reduce the inventory account in dollar amount and as well as the subsidiary reports in unit record the proper cost of goods sold related to that and record the sales related to that and deal with the sales tax now obviously we can't do that in a shopify situation because we're not usually going to make a sale with a sales receipt form in a shopify situation what's going to happen is shopify or amazon or whatever we're using is going to be facilitating the sales transaction so what we're going to see on our side then in quickbooks is eventually the sale is going to hit the bank account so what happens is I'm going to make the sales here and usually each sale may not hit the bank account uh, at each sale so if I sell five dollar products then it's not like my bank's going to be hit by five dollar five dollar five dollar each time oftentimes there's going to be some kind of batching that that takes place so if I was in an on-ground store for example and I'm at a cash register I would basically make whatever sales I do for the day if they were cash sales I would group that cash together go to the bank and then deposit a lump sum for the cash sales that happen so what's going to happen on my bank account is I'm going to have a lump sum amount that's going to be hitting the bank account so that means that that when I categorize my stuff that goes into the bank account on my books I want to categorize it in the same grouping that's going to be shown on the bank statement which adds kind of another bit of a logistical type of problem. So, so when we think about an e-commerce situation, we're not gonna have a sales receipt. What we do have are the bank feeds. We're gonna see the thing hit the bank. So that's one thing that we can deal with. Now, when we see the thing, when we see the deposit hit the bank from like a Shopify store, as we saw in the past, one of the problems is 
that we're not going to see some of the expenses and stuff related to it. So what we would like to do possibly is use other integration apps if we want to get more advanced so that we can break out and see more of the detail that's going to go into our system. So so usually the question is, well, how am I going to how am I going to deal with this inventory flow within within QuickBooks when I'm actually facilitating some of these transactions in a third party platform? Well, one one way you can try to do it is you can say I'm going to integrate everything from Shopify, every sale that happens in Shopify. Every time I make a sale of a product, I want it to, to pull in to our system over here as a check form or a bill form every time I buy inventory. And then every time I sell inventory, I want to create a sales receipt that will then tie out to product items that I have set up in QuickBooks which will basically mirror exactly what we would be doing in an on-ground type of situation. Now, there's a problem with that method, and that is that it's, it's quite complicated, number one, because now you've got to set up all your items in here and in Shopify, make sure that they tie out, and then make sure that the integration is working properly. And number two, it's redundant possibly, because you already have a lot of the data in like a Shopify or Amazon in terms of the inventory count. So to do it again in QuickBooks may not be necessary. And three, oftentimes when you're making sales on like a Shopify or an Amazon, you're looking for volume. You're looking to sell a whole lot of products and you might not need to track in depth each customer other than to get them on your mailing list or something like that in QuickBooks. You might not need to pull all that stuff into QuickBooks. And if you do, uh, then it could overload, it could weigh down your QuickBooks file over time and that wouldn't be a good thing to do. So usually the recommendation, especially for smaller businesses is, is not to do that because you're hopefully you're gonna grow and you don't wanna overwhelm the system or make things too complicated. So the next quest, the next way we can do that is we can say, well, let's think about the points where the bank account is gonna be impacted, especially on the purchasing side. I can see, of course, when I purchase inventory, I'm gonna see the transaction hit the bank and instead of using a perpetual inventory system, we'll use more of a periodic inventory system. So that's how we'll deal with that side of things. And on the sales side of things, we can wait till it hits the bank and do the same thing, record the revenue when it hits the bank. However, we're also going, we might want a little bit more detail than that on the, on the revenue side. So we could use integrations and apps to kind of give us more, more detail on the fees and whatnot. So those are, so that's kind of why the the inventory system in QuickBooks is not really designed exactly for the e-commerce system. However, you can integrate it fairly nicely into an e-commerce system because the real issue is that the other platform is doing part of the work, right? So you so now you got to pull in what you need into the QuickBooks system and we're going to we're going to modify it so that it fits our needs and our needs of course will change on the different businesses we have and how large we are and how much detail we want and so we'll talk about some of those issues in future presentations